Ah, oh, Jesus. No, please. Hey guys, it's Efter. And you might be noticing, well, maybe not. I don't know how easy it is to tell. But, uh, I am playing this game right here, Dead Secret, in VR with the HTC Vive. I recently got a Vive and have mostly just been waiting for cool things to come out to play for the Vive that weren't just, uh, tech demos, kinda. And, uh, this game kinda caught my eye, but it took a while. It just dropped as of the day I'm recording this with HTC support. Actually, it's the day before, but whatever. And uh, it's a horror game, so uh, hopefully I get some good spooks. Also has multiple endings, so we'll, uh, we'll look into that. Hey! Oh, oh, we're moving. Oh, okay, not actually moving with myself. Cool. Designed for people extra sensitive to virtual motion. I'm not really extra sensitive. But I don't... It can be changed, it said. So, just go normal. September 25th. Paris Bullard nope. was found dead in his study five days cool. ago. Nobody believes me, but I think he was murdered. This house in the middle of nowhere holds the secret. There's a story hiding here, and I'm going to cover it. Is it a dead secret? If I'm right, there are four major suspects. Graham Wellington, Josie Herrera, Cynthia Peckman, Bobby Sawyer. I'm not leaving until I find out what happened. Oh, okay. Subtitles are a little slow. Oh, hello. Yeah, subtitles are a little, uh, behind here. Oh. Hi, me! Uh... <laughs> Hi, me. How are you? Okay, so how does this whole dealio work? Ah, it's point and click. Interesting. Well. Alright, in and out. Easy. Just have to find some evidence and get out of here. Alright. What's this? A small parcel tied tightly with twine. I cannot open it with my bare hands. Hello, dust. Oh, god, okay. A uh, reclusive professor found dead in home September 23rd, 1965. Gov. K.S. Harris Bullard, a retired college teacher, was found dead in his home Monday. The body was discovered by Bobby Sawyer. That was the uh, part-time worker. Who worked part-time, yep, for Bullard running odd jobs. A police investigation has concluded that Bullard died of natural causes. He was 63. Bullard moved into his home on Rampo Way several years ago, but was rarely seen about town. He was a private and reclusive man who seemed to have few friends. Bullard raised eyebrows last year when a former student, a pretty young woman named Josie Herrera, moved in with him. Bullard's will, written in 1957, leaves his entire estate to his ex-wife, Cynthia Peckman. Peckman will reportedly sell the house and its contents immediately. Harris was a genius in his discipline, said Graham Wellington, a former colleague. The field of neuroscience is considerably poorer without him. Okay. So, Chai Recluse, found dead in the study. Police ruled death natural. Ran errands for Bullard, found the body. Yep, live-in assistant. Ex-wife, inheritor of his estate. Yep. Former colleague. Okay. Oh. Cool. Uh, let's see. This is supposed to be a seated experience, but... Uh, might be hard to do... And I don't know how this is going to be with me, like, turning around and doing things. That looks bad. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That, that over there looks bad. I'm sure this door leads to the room where Bullard's body was found, but it's locked. Why are there Chinese, like, weird, okay. This isn't the crime scene, I need to investigate the study. Well, oh. And the key, yeah, obviously. Uh, let's go back over here. Oh, wait, can I check these? Hi, me. Ah, Steam messages! No! Ah. One second. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, kind of rolling over cords and things like that down here, which is a little uncomfortable. Okay, so. Oh. That was a mistake. Nothing. 
Okay, missing its knob. And there's a key. So, investigate the crime scene. Roger Dodger. Uh, and, thank you. Okay, uh, is there anything? A oh, piano blocking the way. Can't lift this up with one arm, even using the hand truck. Right. So, there's... I don't know why that happened. Uh, there's a reason why I'm only using one Vive mote. Uh, she only has one hand. I assume is what they're going for. They sure aren't wasting any time selling off Bollard's stuff. Uh, hopefully... Yeah, that was weird. Okay. So, let's, uh... Let's head in here. Uh, hi, other room. Okay. Um... What we got here? What do we have? Yeah. These books are by the same author, Lafcadi O'Hearn. It looks like what is missing. Ah, the Snow Woman. Adapted, and this is going to sound pretty weird because I'm facing away from the microphone, but... Snow Woman, adapted from an original translation by Lafcadi O'Hearn. An old man and his son climbed a mountain to collect firewood. It began to snow heavily and, un un uh, and unable to make it back home. They decided to pass the night in a small hut. In the middle of the night, the young man awoke to see that the door had blown open. A tall woman with long hair and a white kimono was leaning over his father, blowing her breath upon him. Uh, blowing her breath upon him. When she saw that the son was awake, she said, "You are a handsome young man, so I will let you live. But if you ever speak of this to anyone, your life shall be forfeit." In the morning, the young man found his father frozen and dead. He climbed down the mountain alone and never spoke of the episode. A year later, he met and married a young, beautiful girl. They had children together and were happy, but the night of his father's death still weighed heavily on his mind. One night, after having a bit too much to drink, the man told his wife about his encounter with the snow woman. She was furious. You promised not to tell, she screamed. And before his eyes, she became the tall woman with long black hair and a white kimono. If it were not for our children, I would end your life here and now. I will spare you for their sake, but if anything ever happens to them, you shall pay the price. And with that, she mounted into the wind and was gone. Well, okay. That seems, uh... Fair. Dictionaries and language reference, it looks like. A lot of these books aren't even in English. Yeah, that's what it seems to be. Okay, so, what do we got? What do we got? Something with an X on it. Yeah, right there. Now, what the heck are you? Play statue with a weird face. One of them's missing. Alright. Uh. Okay. Note with a foreign symbol. Underneath it, it reads North. Really wish I was facing forward, because, yeah, it's kind of, kind of annoying, but whatever. No dial tone. Okay. Something's typed out here, but the paper is so far into the feeder that I can't pull it out. Okay. There's our way to fix that. Got it. Okay. Writing about Ouija boards in 1852, William Benjamin Carter was the first to describe the phenomenon known as the ideometer effect. The ideometer effect occurs when the subconscious mind takes control of the body without the conscious mind realizing it. Ideometer action is distinct from other forms of involuntary action because responses are driven by existing knowledge and perception. The Ouija board, Carpenter suggested, is a clear manifestation. The participants unwittingly move the planchette because their subconscious mind is guiding them. Another example of this phenomenon is dowsing. The practice of using a divining rod. Okay. Joe, something's after me. It's creeping around the house trying to get in. I'm sure of it. I heard footsteps outside and creaking on the roof. It's not safe here. I've taken the idiofocal lenses from their normal location and hidden them in my study. I've sent you a package that you'll know what to do with. Check the map for the mask. As usual, X marks the spot. Harris, P.S. The sequence is West, East, North. Well, it hit something in this room very suspicious. Suspicious. This would be a great book for my opening paragraph. Alright, well... What's that? It looks like a tiny camera lens. Circular lens. I imagine that's the, uh... The thing we're looking for. Okay. Another note. Harris Bullard, I am Woodcutter. Your past is caught up with you. It's over. Oh. Who's the Woodcutter? Someone's threatening Bullard. 
Okay, so what did he say? Can I actually, like... Oh! If I face forward, can I just do that? Hey, there we go. Okay. Now I don't feel so awkward. Okay, so let's go ahead and check collect... Let's go ahead and check collect the documents. Uh, we are looking for that note. West, east, north, and X marks the spot. Gotcha. Okay, so... There's north. A pair of scissors. I can use it to cut open that package. Good point. Didn't really think about that. Okay, so... Map marks the spot. Well, what's the X? X is over Japan. Oh, uh, okay. Well, there's something right there. I can see that. What is it? Oh boy! Okay, uh, another reading thing. The man who could see with his skin. In 1926, I met a man who could see with his skin. His eyes were sealed with wax and bandage, and he remained aware of the room around him. We held up signs, which he read, and fingers, which he counted, even when we stood behind him. After the performance, I gave him $200 for the secret. He explained that he could see as long as some part of his skin remained exposed to the air. He described it as a shift in the wind or a slight breeze on his face. The subtle motion of the hair on his arm. After years of focus and practice, he had developed the ability to form a mental image of his surroundings based only on slight sensations. This man had achieved a form of idiofocus. Granted, he only had access to a very narrow range of sensory information, but the result was powerful. I immediately resolved to discover the secret of his ability. Now, almost four decades later, I am very close. There's a newspaper clipping here. It reads, Eyeless Joe found dead in hotel. Weird. Okay. Something about this painting makes me uncomfortable. It's very bleak. Yeah, so there's a lot of weirdness with, like, body parts, because I think I'm supposed to be standing up. Even though it's a seated experience. Just a regular lamp. Record player with no record inside. I have a feeling that has something to do with the uh, thing. We're gonna wipe him out. That's the snow lady that she was or we were reading about. Uh, okay, I think I'm a little too far back from my computer, which might explain the weird body thing going on. Another lens. I found two of them now. Okay. Well, these are the obviously these are the idiofocal lenses he was talking about. That's empty. Uh, what's your diploma about? Okay. Doesn't say anything. It doesn't turn on because it's broken. Uh, let's go ahead and check over here. What we got? Okay, so, masks. Maybe they were Japanese. These masks make me uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, they kind of make me uncomfortable, too. Okay, so... I don't see anything to do with those. Let's, uh... Oh, I can actually just... I can actually just shift around the room using... The, uh... The little direction pad. Kind of nice. Sorry. Okay. That's Japan. Okay. Whoa! Okay, um, right. It's a small box. Let's get a better look at the, this on the desk. Well, north is missing. Uh, no, it's... It, wait. <laughs> yes, it is missing. Okay, uh, let's go back. And... I won't... You're a jerk. So yeah. It's always September, but today's cold and dark falls here, I guess. So this is a, um... Gotta make sure I am where I am. Uh, this is a horror game, I will remind everybody. To what degree, I don't yet know. Ah! Okay, I think we know the degree now. Okay. That's my arm. My own arm scared me. Thanks, lady. Alright. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, let's cut that open. Old book, it says Quidon on the cover, whatever that means. The author is Lafcadio Hearn. Okay. Uh. It's great, but... Um... Okay, let's, uh, let's head back into the room. That was not on before. Okay, this is where Bobby Sawyer found Bullard's body. He's been dead for a couple of days, though. The coroner ruled that he died from pancreatic failure. Okay, what's up with the TV? Hi. Um, yeah, no, yeah, the TV was, uh, definitely off before, um, we have a book, uh, I don't think it goes over here, though, no, let's head back here, I'm trying to speak up so you guys can hear me, so hopefully I don't sound too loud or too quiet, as the case might be. I can't push the book all the way back. It feels like it's hitting something. Wait, there's something jammed back there. It's a flat triangular wedge or some sort of foreign writing on it. Ah! Goes right over here. Right here. Oh, great. Okay. Oh. Gotta do this first. Okay. Oh, God. I gotta read the note. God damn. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, west, east, north. West, east, north. West, east, north. West, east, north. West. West. No, that's all I'm trying to do. West, east, north. Uh, it's not what west means. Okay, so. North is that symbol? West, east, north. Okay. Ah, uh, hi! Hi, um... Yeah, okay. I see the lenses fit into the mask eye like pop- like sockets! It's like a weird pair of goggles! Eh, mm, great! What? What? We're not doing this. Hi! Hey! How are you? Um... Who was that? Uh, questions that really do deserve to be asked, I must say. Oh, God. And there's a page taped to the back of this painting. <clears throat> okay. Josie, if you're reading this note, then something must have happened to me. I may be dead or missing. If so, you're the only person who could save our research. I was the assistant. The truth is that I'm being threatened. It started before I left the college. I get notes every few months from somebody calling himself Woodcutter. What he wants is access to our research. He wants me to turn over our plans to the Lunar Dream Apparatus. Josie, my life is in danger. Woodcutter knows things. Secret things about my past that nobody should know. I'll not yield to simple blackmail, but lately the threats have escalated. I'm sure I'm being watched at the house. I sometimes hear things on the other side of the wall. Yesterday, with the mask on, I thought I saw somebody reaching for me. It's a warning from my subconscious. I'm no longer safe here. I've locked our research away in the safe upstairs. I want you to retrieve it and leave. Destroy everything before you go. Burn the house down if you have to. Well, she didn't do that. Just get the research and get out of here. Head for a big city where it's easy to hide. I'm counting on you, Joe. Don't let our work fall into their hands. Harris. Blackmailed by the woodcutter. Primary suspect. Ordered by Bullard to destroy their research and split. Yeah, well, she didn't do that. I knew there was more to this story. Whatever Boulder was mixed up in, I bet there's evidence. And that's safe. Okay. Open the safe upstairs. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. On the other side, there's no keyhole. Okay. Uh, let's, uh... We don't have a record... My hunch was right. Billard's death is definitely fishy. Better stop and review my notes.
Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked this video, please click the like button down below. And if you want to see more of these videos, I'd really appreciate you clicking that subscribe button. I upload every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if you want to see more videos, check then. I also have a Twitter if you'd like to follow me there. And a Twitch, and my Steam is also located down below. Share me with friends and family if you guys can. I'd really appreciate it. I hope to see you all for the next video. See you then.